Hi, my name is Professor Robert, and today we will be talking about hydrogen. Now, what is hydrogen? We don't hear about it a lot. Well, let's start with the basics. Hydrogen is a gas. Its particles are spread apart and move around freely. Meanwhile, particles of solids and gases are closer together and can't move around as freely. However, as you probably know, particles are always in constant motion. Hydrogen has high flow rate and very low viscosity. In fact, its viscosity is 50 times that of water. It has a low viscosity and high flow rate for two reasons. First, it's a gas, so it can move around pretty fast. Second, it has the lowest particle mass. That means there's the lightest fluid there is. Due to that, hydrogen is very hard and dangerous to transport because it can leak very easily. It's also not efficient to transport because it has very low density. Actually, you can make hydrogen yourself. Okay, so this is what you'll need for the experiment. First, you'd want a teaspoon, then a beaker, or any other container you want to use for this. Then, you would want some alligator clips, but you can use wires, but alligator clips are still easier to use. Uh, there is some salt, you want some salt? I'm using final salt, but you can use any type of salt. Then you want some lead, two pieces of lead. If you don't have lead, you can use pencils. It will work just as well. Um, and you want a small container to catch the hydrogen, which will be bubbling up. It's better if it's clear, so you can see how much hydrogen you got. And lastly, the battery. Here I'm using a 9 volt battery. You must know polarity, because hydrogen will be building up on the negative terminal. Let's begin the experiment. First, take your salt and pour it into the beaker of water. Well, pour quite a bit. Now, you will take your spoon and mix that. Make sure all the salt dissolves. Yep. Keep mixing. Keep mixing. Now, you would take your alligator clips and uh, attach the lead to them. If you're using wire, you can tape the lead to it, or a pencil. Now, uh, remember, hydrogen builds up on the negative terminal of the battery, and oxygen on the positive. I'll explain this later. Connect the wires to their proper positions. Once again, if you're using regular wire, you can just tape it. Now, you will take the lead and submerge it into the water. Immediately, you should see bubbles forming. Now, let's take a closer look. There you go. Okay, here you can see gas bubbling up. I connected the black wire to the negative terminal and the red one to the positive. I used the cap to collect the hydrogen building up on the negative terminal. Now, how it works is electricity goes through the lead and through water. Hydrogen starts building up on the negative terminal and oxygen on the positive. As probably all of you know, water is H2O, two hydrogen, one oxygen. That's why hydrogen builds up much faster than the oxygen. Splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen using electricity is called electrosis. You can see, after about 5 minutes, the water turned yellow because of the reaction between salt and iron and the alligator clips. But, but it's not dangerous, don't worry. The property of hydrogen I didn't talk to you about is it's explosive, and they use it as rocket fuel. Now, let's take a match, light it up, and bring it up to the cup with hydrogen, and should make a pop.
the only byproduct of exploding hydrogen is water, so it's a clean fuel. Yeah, the water turned really brown at the end. Hydrogen is used as rocket fuel for two reasons, for its flammability and cleanness. However, it's not stored in its gas form, it's stored in its liquid form, to conserve precious space on a rocket. Sadly, you can't get liquid hydrogen at home. For that, you'll need temperatures six times lower than on the North Pole, and huge pressures. That is because the boiling point of hydrogen is negative 252 degrees. Therefore, at normal temperatures, it's a gas. Just like water evaporates at 100 degrees Celsius. Hydrogen also comes in a solid state. As fancy science people like me like to call it metallic hydrogen. However, that's really hard to make. For that, we'll need temperatures lower than 300,000 degrees and humongous pressures. Those very little successful attempts of creating metallic hydrogen. Also, even though hydrogen is very light, it makes up 75% of the mass of the universe. That's because all of our stars are made out of hydrogen. Hydrogen is also used to make things float because of its low density. However, not much anymore since the Hindenburg disaster. That's when back in 1937, a German airship uh, that uses hydrogen uh, to fly burned down. Hydrogen can also be used as fuel for vehicles. Now currently there's two ways to do it, by burning hydrogen or combining it back with oxygen to make electricity. Burning hydrogen isn't the best way, since hydrogen can easily leak because of its low viscosity and high flow rate. However, it's still clean and doesn't produce any pollution. The second way is by using hydrogen fuel cells. When hydrogen and oxygen are pumped into those fuel cells, it combines them to make water and produce electricity that would later drive a motor. Both types of engines are currently quite expensive, but maybe later hydrogen will be driving the future forward.